Patrice, little mushroom. There is a teenager who sits at the bus stop outside my window every evening. I'm certain he's older. His tanned hair blooming on his bottom lip. As he sits at the bus stop, back and belly folded into thighs, his profile is so slender you can almost entirely see through him. Secret actions couldn't be concealed if he tried. His body more a sack of knots than a singularly angled wedge. I think he's an allegorical figure, testimony to my period of transition. Maybe he smells like all-night coffee or piss or granular egg. Perhaps there is bacteria in his colon. I cannot tell through the window, but he signals unwittingly from the dusk like a balm for the seedy and dispossessed. The whole mass of his form throbs for attention. He's a page torn from a medical volume, illustrating the profligacy of germs in an urban scene. A reek of chain smoking and glycerin. I'm certain he could turn a profit with those good looks. If I blow my own breath onto the window, the laws of perspective allow me to draw scattered arrows all over. I can draw a heart in the fog, shooting expressions in his direction that envelop him completely. It gives me a strange, uncertain power, a kind of persuasive interruption. Some other men are there too, busy out on the ramp, getting low down drunk as a goose. I spoke to one once, hoping to catch the eye of that boy. But they all just sat there, like sagging wood, ripe young bellies gone bad. One shouted, What were you hoping for, old crow? Giraffes drinking from a bloody fountain? They laughed their big laughs, but I was sure something flowed from the boy as I passed. A rivulet from a summit a scent of coniferous forest. I portray and refashion my own clunky desire to suit the hours. Right now he seems more like a little boat blown away, a light thing with his soft cap and rough socks. He frequently just sits, sometimes with both hands down his trousers, as air frosted by weather is warmed in bursts by traffic. I can sense the hot stream of information entering his body. Insistent banality pours outside. I wonder if a boulder was pushed down on him by friends and family too. I wonder, should I rescue him? I think perhaps we might cry together and go to sleep. Or fuck in the garden with the lights off. Tear open the rambunctious hole of anal sex toss him tartly off and watch as his invisibilities mix with soil and the twitching of my neighbour's curtains. I mean, I shouldn't, of course I shouldn't, but when the air inside your head is offensively polluted, things happen quickly. Caligula in his madness appointed his own horse to the Senate of Rome, so why not go off, breaking the routine and divisional barriers between girl and boy? He's there now. I lay my head on the table, listening to the amplified tremors of sound, flicking and stroking the wood. I imagine this is the noise his heart makes as it tumbles liquid through that small, living chest. How I'd fold it carefully into my arms, happy as his form disappeared inside the warmth of my own frame. Boy, Young man, body of desire like body of water, all fluid and rushing in. In this way I try to keep living in the world. Perhaps he'll bring lovely orthodox candles over, thanks ever so, and my own personal landscape. Well, I'd leave that to be narrated by firm, hard voices of my neighbours.